Come on up, guys. Oh, it's going to be good. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Uh, how you guys doing? You had to sit through this entire thing, and when you go last, I mean, that's brutal, right? Like, you have to just, like, sit in the hot seat and be like, oh, my gosh. I can imagine. Uh, Jason, I'll start with you. <laughs> uh, I saw one, the first word I heard was I, I felt like what the Lord kept unpacking just at, at different, uh, different angles, and it was soldier, soldier. And then the words uh, that came with it, challenger, feisty, intense, warrior, uh, iron that sharpens iron, the clash that makes everyone stronger. And the phrase was, you fight for what you love. You fight for what you love. I see you like a watchman on the wall. When you feel like you're shoulder to shoulder with your brothers and sisters, you can stand all day and all night. I saw you, it is actually uh, relatively humorous. I, I saw you, <laughs> it makes me laugh. I saw you at the Battle of Helm's Deep and you were standing there right in that scene where you're like up against Gimli and, and uh, uh, I can't remember who, who else is there in that moment. But the idea of, of standing in a place where you know that there's siege coming, and because when you're, when you're with your brothers, you can stand all day and all night. But the Lord highlighted that phrase, the watchman, and um, led me to Isaiah 62, 6 and 7. O Jerusalem, I have, put, I have set watchmen on the walls. You who, who make mention of the Lord do not rest day and night. Um, until he establishes Jerusalem as a praise in the earth. And that, that scripture speaks so well of you, that you are a watchman who the Lord has set in a position. And, and there is a feistiness, and there is a, a, a I am going to stand here, and I'm not going to be moved. And I, I don't even know or care what's going to happen, because I'm just, I'm here to, to do what I've been called to do. That, that, that soldier mentality, and even though I know, like, uh, 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 even though I didn't get like particular like worshiper pictures or, or or musical language, I know that 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 watchman on the wall I think is such an incredible picture of the Levites and those who minister in the house of the Lord, which we see in, in, in Chronicles, like David has the thousands of musicians and singers. Those were the watchmen that he set on the wall. And then and then throughout Israel's history, they had the, the revivals of David's tabernacle, and those were the watchmen on the wall. And I wanted to, to highlight the, the watch. And there's something with, there's prophetic vision and sight that the Lord is giving you. I, I was reminded of four years ago uh, in Michigan, there was this random migration of snow owls uh, to, the, to, uh, to Michigan. There was like people that were like traveling and National Geographic was running stories and CNN and all. It was just kind of this weird phenomenon where there's these gathering of these these snow owls and and I really felt like it was prophetic because the snow owl speaks of one that can see in the night and see incredibly well and can see far and see and and does not mind the the cold of winter in the snow. It, I think it's a, a picture of the watchman, one who sees in the spirit, um, and I, I believe that's you. I think you are a seer in the spirit. I think that you discern times and seasons. I think you understand the hours that you're living in. And therefore, you stand and you watch. And instead of like taking that, that knowledge and information and trying to do your own thing, you just use that as motivation to, to stand your guard. Uh, hold fast, stand tall. And then that, that phrase, you who make mention of the Lord from Isaiah 62, make mention of the Lord. Let praise pour forth. Praise is your weapon. Let it pour forth. Let it pour forth. And, and I even see it pouring forth more uh, from the stage. I don't know if you if you sing at all. I haven't seen you sing. I've only had you play bass. But I, I feel like the Lord says, sing, 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 sing. There's, there's, there is that anointing and power, and I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, they have to throw you up on Sunday morning immediately and, and, and lead for everyone. That, that's not what I'm saying, but, but 
but it goes into the word, but no more like, I'm just a, I'm just a musician. You are not. You are a worship leader. You are one who makes mention of the Lord. And there's power in your praise. There's authority in your praise. You move things and, and your worship will be fueled by what you see as a watchman. Uh, I saw you as uh, a Jonathan in scriptures. And sometimes for whatever reason, Jonathan gets cast as kind of this weaker person. Jonathan was a warrior. He was a warrior, and he was for the brotherhood, and he was for the Lord, and he was loyal to the end. And there's, there's a Jonathan in you, and, and, and you are to, to, to carry that in friendship. Uh, the Lord says, encourager, and you are one who replenishes courage. The true encouragement, not flattery, but one who is able to give courage to those who are lacking courage. And then the, the last word the Lord just said was just anointed. You are anointed. You are an anointed man of God in this house, and your, your leaders recognize your anointing. Your family recognizes your anointing. The Lord recognizes the anointing and wanted to affirm that to you tonight. You are anointed. Uh, was it just Angel? I, I didn't hear him. Angel, how are you? I'm doing awesome. It's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, I heard one main word, and the word was revivalist revivalist. You've been marked by what you haven't seen, but that you know is real. You know revival is more real than what your generation has said is real. And you've chased after what your generation has said is real. And you know there's something else and you know there's something more. And the Lord has begun to stir your heart to see a move of God. And the Lord just wants to say, revival is real. Revival is coming, you will take part in it, and you will lead in it, and you were born for revival. You set your heart on a journey for what you got in part, like a message in a bottle. I saw that you were not in a situation where you just, as long as you've known, you're like, oh yeah, revival. Like This, this was something that at the picture I got was somebody who received a message in a bottle, and in it, it had a, 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 a seeming, seemingly cryptic message that said, wait here. And there wasn't a lot of description. You didn't fully understand, but you followed because you knew something inside says you were made for this. And, and, and that is what revival has been to you. And, and, God, the, and seeing the move of God has been for you. You haven't seen the clear picture. You didn't get the clear prophetic word. None of those things happen. And yet, you know that you were born to see something move. I, I, I saw you as John the Baptist. Um, I saw you as one who is in the wilderness saying, prepare the way of the Lord. You were made to prepare environments for God to move. I see you going in and preparing different environments. I see you in the workplace. I see you in, 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 in secular venues and literally preparing the way for God to come and move. And your joy is made full when the bride hears the voice of the bridegroom. I heard preacher I think that the Lord is going to loose your tongue, and I, I, don't, I don't know fully what that looks like, but I, I heard preacher. Uh, you're a daughter of his presence. You were born into something that you don't fully realize. There's a godly heritage that you've only begun to discover. I, I felt so strongly that there is in your heritage and lineage, and some that you might not even know about, intercessors, praying men and women, people that were part of the, the holiness movement that have prayed for you right now. You might feel like you're starting your journey, but you are stepping into the prayers of your grandfathers and your grandmothers and your, your grandpas. And, and I don't know how far down the line, but, but they have prayed into you and they are in the great cloud of witnesses and they are cheering you on. You are not alone. You are not an accident. You are not a mistake, but you are stepping into a long heritage and a calling that's behind you. <clears throat> and just let this, let, this sen let this sentence help guide you. Life only makes sense in his presence. But the Lord has given you a, a, a clear, true north that you know that, that, that when, when confusion comes in and some of these things start coming in, it's, 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 a, it's a sign that, that you've stepped out of his presence and, and your life 
will only make sense in the presence of God, but you will operate in such clarity. And uh, uh, I, might pray for, I might pray for you later. I have something else for you. It's good, nothing bad. <laughs> but I'm gonna pray for, I'm gonna pray for you uh, later. But I wanna pray for both of you guys too, just real briefly. Um, just right here. If you guys would stretch out your hands to these two people, I, I, I feel that they are uh, instrumental in, in the next waves of the Holy Spirit that's coming to this body and to this church. Um, so, Lord, I ask uh, for Angel, Lord, I ask for a loosing of her tongue in the name of Jesus. I ask that she would speak of and testify. Lord, I ask that you would, uh, uh, you would anchor her so strongly to this idea that you are moving and that you are coming to visit a generation and she will be part of that. She will not be along for the ride, but she will be a leader in this move of God. And Lord, I ask for Jason. Lord, as he stands watch on uh, on this wall, Lord, I ask that you would be the glory and the lifter of his head. Lord, I ask that he would sing choruses and phrases about who God is, Lord, that are that it's so creative and so beautiful, Lord, that that is just for the exact moment, Lord. I ask for the rhema word of God to be in his mouth, that it would be sung and that it would be spirit and that it would be life, Lord, that he would worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. And I ask that 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 from, from his car to his bedroom to this stage, that his worship would shake strongholds and that it would break things off in the spirit, Lord, and be part of ushering in. You both were here to prepare the way for the Lord. You guys are here to prepare the way for a move of God. And so protect them, stand with them, give them courage, a spirit of might. In the name of Jesus, amen. How are you guys doing? Top of the morning. Jason? And I know I spoke a word over you last night, but this makes sense now. Uh, and I, when I was journaling and praying over you, I just, I knew this was a young, a young person. I don't know how I knew. How old are you? 29, okay. So here's what I seen. When I prayed for you, the very first thought that came to mind was rock star. This guy's a rock star. You hear that? That's what they do for rock stars. God sees you as a rock star for his kingdom, not for the man's applause, but for God's applause. And God's applauding you today. Also seen a gentle horse. And um, there's strength, there's power. And your, your size is seen. You're not messed with um, because of your giant faith. And like the horse who's graceful, you will not be ignored. You are gentle, yet you don't use or misuse your strength or your faith because of your gentleness. Horses, or most horses are made for riding, and others can climb on your back and you can carry them to their destination they're, because of your grace, your gentleness, and strength. Your faith life will carry people. Um, I wrote this down. Noise is distracting to you. Political noise, cultural noise, civil unrest. And you know there's a better way. You know there's a different way. And you know there's a kingdom message. You have a message and you have a mantle to rise above all the noise of culture and to be an agent of change. And you're not bringing people back to something old, something used, or even ancient. You're calling a generation. God will use you to call a generation to something that's eternal, eternal truth, an eternal word, an eternal God. Rock stars, Jason, have influence. People notice their tweets. They notice their posts, and people notice you. People listen to when they speak. Um, so the Lord says, don't waste your influence. Say what matters. Say what's true. 
A generation, and it's your generation, is longing for something true, something eternal, so lead them to it. The Lord told me you're like the Pied Piper. Do you know that story? All right. <laughs> I had to look it up too, so. I just said, Lord, I don't remember that story. So a village is going through a pandemic infested with rats. And this guy who plays the flute comes in and musically plays and leads these rats over a cliff and they die. But the political force in the village doesn't pay the piper. So what happens is he starts playing a tune for the children and he pulls all the children out of the village. Except there's three children that don't go. It was the deaf because he couldn't hear the tune. It was the lame because he couldn't walk. And it was the, the blind because he couldn't see where to go. And here's what the Lord said to me. Your intent won't be like the Pied Piper's intent to do something evil. But the Lord has given you a musical gift. In the same way the Pied Piper can lead nature or lead people, God's given you a musical gift to lead people to something else. The blind, the lame, the deaf are those who are desperate for the real thing. And in the story, those three children lead the village to the other children to get them back to safety. And you are the Pied Piper for your generation to play to lead them back to the kingdom of God, to lead them to something great. <clears throat> so I wrote, you're the rock star who sings a different tune and leads others to the place of safety. One last thing. There's something you're holding before the Lord an opportunity or, an, or a request, and you're wondering when or how long. And the Lord says, trust his timing and don't rush it. If you hurry this um, and you, if you force this, you risk birthing an Ishmael when the father wants to give you an Isaac. And Isaac means laughter. And once you see his timing and his provision, you will laugh. Angel, when I got all the, uh, everyone who we were praying for, I just wrote every number out, and the Lord said to start with you. You were the first person the Lord put upon my heart to pray for, and immediately the Lord said, Matthew 20, 16, the last will be first, and the first will be last. And the word that the Lord gave me was unnoticed. That's what came to mind when I prayed. And there have been seasons that you have felt unnoticed. And I even seen in my mind's eye like a little girl behind her mother's leg. Kind of wanted to hide behind mom. But God says he's positioning you to be noticed and to be seen. You are noticed and you are seen. And Caleb has already mentioned a preacher is in you. I get shyness. I don't know if you're shy, but I get it. Are you? All right. I get shyness. I'm an introvert. It ex Like tonight, I'll sleep like a baby because talking in front of people exhausts me. But I do it um, because it's what the Lord's commanded me to do. And there's a command on your life. You're going to be noticed. You're going to be seen. And so I don't think the Lord wants you to hide. And you're not a hider, but he's getting ready to bring you into something more. Uh, this will be nothing you will have to figure out. You're gonna, uh, you may stumble your way through it, but it, it will be the Lord in all the stumbling. So you don't have to figure this out because God will place you and position you for the future without force or without effort. Your role right now would be to continue to be faithful, to continue to be confident in the placement and the position that you have right now, and trust Father with the outcome of your destiny. Exodus 14, 14 comes to mind. It's what the Lord gave me. It says, the Lord will fight for you, and you will only need to be still. Again, you don't have to figure it out. I've never had the, I never have figured out, well, I'm, I still don't know. Like, Lord, am I doing this right? Am I in the right place? All you have to do is show up. And the, if you'll show up, if you'll be faithful, if you will be loyal, if you will, if you will stand in the things that the Lord has already presented before you, he will literally just open the door for the next thing that he has for you. Um, 
each step is an arrival is what Eugene Peterson has said. And it's been, a, it's been a message that's ministered to me. And I think it'll minister to you. Just know you're here tonight. That's a step and you've arrived. He's going to give you another step and you're going to arrive again. He's going to give you another step and open another door and you're going to arrive. And each step will be an arrival. But it'll never be the end. There will always be more. There will always be the next thing. Um, I wrote this down. Inner strength that you have not yet tapped into. There's something fierce on the inside of you. There's something great on the inside of you. I think you're aware of it, but it's not been unleashed yet. The Lord sees you as beautiful, and there's an inner strength that uh, you're aware of but have not tapped into or unleashed yet. I sense you don't see yourself this way, but Father is going to um, release this strength in his timing for you. Um, This strength that is coming is a battle for your faith and, and, and for others' faith. Your faith will be noticed and will inspire others to faith. So step into the beauty that God sees in you and be confident in it. Be bold in who you are in Christ and watch how God will blossom you into a strength and beauty for his kingdom. You are seen. You are noticed. You are strong. You are beautiful in the eyes of the Lord. So go in the strength that you have. Angel, I'm going to start with you. Uh, I felt like the Lord just highlighted, wanted me to start with you. And uh, he, he showed me some really unique things about you. Um, show me creative, prophetic, that you actually see uh, in colors, rhythms, and patterns. Uh, in the way that you hear and you see and you think. Uh, he showed me that you have a, an inner steadiness and a consistency. And it actually bothers you when you see flaky people. <laughs> like people that are like really excited about something and then not. And then like they're here one minute and then they're not. You are, you're not going to be the one that in a race sprints out of the front line. But you're going to stay in that race consistent through the entirety of the race. And the Lord is highlighting your consistency and your steadfastness, the word that the Lord said over you was, when I see her, I think of steadfast. And there's a scripture, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Paul writes, be steadfast and immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. And God wants to remind you today that your labor and your, and your work and your faithfulness and your steadfastness is not in vain. It's the consistency that's actually going to help you to arrive to what God has called you to. Um, I saw a picture of you walking in a forest by yourself, a dense forest, and you got to a point where you did not know where to go. And you said, which way do I go? And the Lord wanted me to highlight this to you, that in the season that you're in, God is teaching you how to walk in the spirit. He's teaching you to no longer uh, be trained and to be motivated by just natural means, but to actually hear the still small voice of the Lord and to be led by the Spirit of God. Because learning to hear the voice of God and learning to walk in the Spirit now is going to be very important in the days to come and the years to come for the things that God has assigned for you. Isaiah 30 verse 21 is a scripture for you. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Verse number 20, though, the verse before that says, although the Lord has given you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, he will still be with you to teach you. You will see your teacher with your own eyes. And I believe that uh, God is promising you that in the years and in the days to come, God's going to make himself very real to you. He's going to encounter you in ways that maybe you've never encountered the Lord. Maybe you've wanted to encounter the Lord. Maybe you hear even people doing this type of thing and say, how come I can't hear the voice of God like that? I wish God would speak to me. But God wants to highlight two things. Number one, do not denigrate the way that he has already spoken to you. Because you're a daughter and you can have confidence that in your steadfastness and in your consistency, you know the voice of the Lord. And the second thing that he wants to highlight is that 
standing in this place where you want to move beyond where you've ever gone before is like standing in this woods going, I don't know which way to turn. God has not brought you to this place to abandon you. He's brought you here to train you. Uh, I don't know if you've done this, but I saw you sitting at a table with a, a wide open Bible and you were doing art in the Bible. You were beautifying have you ever seen how somebody, do, they post it on Instagram, it drives me crazy. But like people like drawing pictures in their Bibles and like coloring. And I just saw you doing that. And I, and I asked the Lord, is this like literal or is this picturesque? And he said, no, that what's going to happen as a result of you being sensitive to saying, yes, God, teach me how to hear your voice. God's going to give you greater clarity in the word of God so that there's going to be this uh, symbiotic relationship between your prayer life and your word life and that's actually going to become God teaching you like a bike two pedals you know you push one and then the other pulls up and it's going to create the movement what you are learning right now is actually going to be the necessary tools you will need for what's coming in the future um, I, I hesitate to say this because I don't uh, I don't I don't like to talk about movements and directions, but I felt it so strongly. Uh, someday you're going to find yourself living in a place you never thought you would be living. Amen. I think there's a location. You're, I think you're very, uh, uh, maybe a home, homebody, you like home. Uh, God's going to put you, I don't know if it's like a, a, a travel or a missions thing or if it's temporary, but you're going to find yourself living in a place and you're going to stand in that place and you're going to go, how in the world did I end up here? And it's in that moment, God's going to say, that's why I taught you how to hear my voice there. So that when you're standing here, you're not going to be off, you're not going to be off road. You're not going to be, get off the rails. God's going to keep you safe and consistent. You're, you're a trustworthy one. I, I just hear the Lord just saying that, that I want to grant to you the keys of the kingdom because you're a trustworthy daughter. Um, Jason. heard the Lord say this, it's time to move beyond your comfort zone. <laughs> You've been comfortable sitting in the back of the car, and God says, I want you to sit in the front seat. You're always the guy that's like, oh, I'll, I'll sit in the back. Let somebody else get shotgun. Bass players are always back there kind of doing their Just kind of sitting in the pocket in the groove, just enjoying it. And God's like, no more comfort zone. I'm calling you to the front seat. This isn't a time for you to slow down. It's actually a time for you to speed up. God wants to put a spirit of urgency in you because God is calling all of the mighty men to arise. God is calling all of the mighty men to arise. And you would never say in a fight like okay hey i'm i'm in but god actually says no there's a warrior spirit on the inside of you and here's a scripture for you it's judges chapter six it says the lord is with you you mighty man of valor oh my lord if the lord is with me then why has all this happened to us this is gideon speaking to the angel of the lord in verse number 14 he said go in this might that is yours, and you shall save Israel from the hands of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? So the angel of the Lord found Gideon in the wine press, hiding, trying to shuck a little bit of wheat and eat like a handful of granola and crawl back up into his cave. And the angel of the Lord showed up and he said, you mighty man of valor. So I'm looking at you right now, and I'm saying, arise, you mighty man of valor. <clears throat> It's not, don't be hiding in the basement. Don't be hiding in the wine press. It's time for you to arise. And don't wait for somebody else to step up. This is an hour of urgency, and he's marked you as one who has a warrior spirit on the inside of you. Uh, whether that's in worship, it doesn't just have to be on this platform. What happens in you in your relationship with God off of this platform is actually the only thing that people experience is the residue of what you do in the secret place when you stand in the public place. You do battle in the secret place so that you can help others experience freedom in the public place. Um, I, I sensed uh, that there 
is inside of you like a, in, in your life, I don't know what it is, but there's a leash that is, that is kind of connected to you. If you've ever seen a, a, uh, uh, an, a dog that has a super long leash in the yard and it runs so far, and then all of a sudden, and it realizes that's as far as I can go. I feel like up until this point, the enemy has had a leash, and it has a name. I don't know what the name is. I asked the Lord. He wouldn't give it to me, but you know what it is. It's a leash that for you has been a limitation. Every time you try to step out, any time that you begin to dream or believe, or your mindset will only go to a certain point, and there's this thing that the enemy tugs on and says, no, remember. And the Lord wants to announce to you tonight that he's cutting that leash. The leash is gone. And so the next time the leash gets jerked, you tell the, you tell the enemy, the Lord has set me free. The Lord is, and I'm not saying that it's like a sin or any of those types of things. What I really sense is it's almost like a mentality or a belief that God wants to replace with a brand new level of faith. It's like Gideon who's like, Lord, if if you're going to use me to be a deliverer, how, why has all this other stuff happened to me? And the angel didn't sit down and have a counseling session with him and say, well, let me explain it to you why this happened and why this happened. No, he said, go in this might that is yours. Have I not sent you? In other words, have more confidence in the encounter and the affirmation of the Lord in this moment than you have in the fear and the anxiety of previous moments. So God is going to move in your life in a mighty in a mighty way. So be ready to move. Don't slow down. Take the emergency break off. Sit in the front row. It's going to be bumpy, but God's taking you someplace. And it's going to be really good in Jesus' name. think we need it um so those of you who know who don't know angels over our children's ministry and when you don't see her on sunday that's because she's fulfilling her military obligations um <laughs> she has done anything from detect be used in the military to detect roadside bombs to who knows you got your pilot's license she's quite a quite a gal Jason is the jack of all trades here at this church. He does anything from clean the buildings to help with the youth. He has led in worship. He can sing. Um, you see him up on the worship team. Um, God uses him in ways that most don't even see. And uh, they are just a force, and they're a tremendous blessing, each in their own right. And so I um, want to pray for them. You guys kind of got called out in the carpet today, which is exactly why I had you sit in these seats. So, um, so. Yes, all these witnesses. Father, these words were spoken for all to hear um, because you needed Jason and Angel to hear them. And God, we just affirm that what was spoken over their lives is more than true. And not only does it hold weight for the moment, it holds weight for the future. And so, Father, we release them without hindrance in all that you've called them to do. Um, Father, help them to push through all of the commitments and all of the distractions so that they can fulfill your ministry that you have placed clearly upon their lives. God, thank you that you're going to use them. Thank you that you're going to use them in ways that they only see in part, but Father, they will walk in it. They, they won't be able to miss what you have for them. And God, I'm so grateful for the fact that you are raising them up. Father, I'm so grateful that you have marked them and that it is for such a time as this. Yes. And so, Father, we release them. And, Father, we recognize them. And, Father, we rejoice with them today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen and amen.